going to apologise right now, by the way. I have a memory like a sip, so I'm going to be looking at this for quite a while. Um, I've come to the conclusion, this is my third time doing this, um, comedy might be my midlife crisis. <laughs> fucking disappointing as well, I'm 36, so I am not technically, like, slap bang at the start and end of millennials. Everybody else before us got to have sports cars and fucking affairs and all this shit. <laughs> I'm just standing in front of a group of strangers and Ramsey making a tit out of myself. <laughs> it's not exactly a fucking great midlife crisis to have, is it? People get to go headfirst into walls on superbikes or by Ferraris or anything like this. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna make a twat out of myself. <laughs> sound. Because it's literally all I can afford. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's the millennial fucking problem, isn't it? Um, I'm assuming most of us are manks in this room, aren't we? Yeah. 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 yeah! No, no, no. No! No! <laughs> no! no. no. Fucking get out then! <laughs> Enough of that! Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Advantages, and one of those advantages is having the stupidest fucking questions in the world asked you online. Yeah. Um, as a millennial, I spend quite a lot of time online because, again, can't afford anything fucking else. So I get exposed to a lot of people, and when they find out you're from the Isle of Man, it's just like the brain drops through the fucking floor and disappears. And they ask you the stupidest shit. I once got asked, do you have electricity on the Isle of Man? <laughs> Online. <laughs> Online. <laughs> and do you know what I said? I said, yep. Yeah. But it's not, the same, it's not the same kind of electricity you're used to. <laughs> See, our electricity is just steam. <laughs> Really electricity, it's just really fucking high power water that mimics it. And they were like, really? Really is it? And I was like, no you fucking idiots! <laughs> fucking hell! <laughs> it runs in the family though, my sister used to live in England and she was doing this forensics course in Doncaster and she actually convinced every single person on her course that on a clear day on the coast of England, you can see the sheep running around saying <laughs> that because of the radiation from Chernobyl. <laughs> she let them believe that for about three years before she finally dropped the car on them. It's not true. And it took them three years to figure it out because they hear the Isle of Man and they think it's just some mystical place. And it's our fault, because we fucking believe in fairies here. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. Not me. No. Not me. Oh. Sorry, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't buy into any kind of superstition. Um, you know, fairies, I say the word rat. Oh. How the fuck do Manx people order ratatouille? <laughs> <laughs> just, just say <laughs> What do you fucking say? It's got the word rat in it. You whistle and go, on a ratatouille. I can't fucking say it. <laughs> and another one that gets me as well is ladders. Right? People say you shouldn't walk under ladders. It's bad luck. Right, um, are you implying that B&Q sells magic fucking ladders? <laughs> because I don't believe they do. I fucking stood on one of them, and the only thing magic was about it was how I fucking got off alive. <laughs> As I spend a lot of time online, I get exposed to weird things. Um, there's this fantastic, fantastic Twitter account that I follow called Accidental Partridge. I don't know if anybody's on Twitter and follows it, but if you don't, you should. 
Aha, exactly. <laughs> Basically, the summation of the account is things that are said in real life that could have easily been said by Alan Partridge. I think an example of one I saw recently was This Is Your Life. Does anybody remember that show, yes. This Is Your Life? Right. For those of you that aren't in the loop, basically, they get somebody of note, of worth, of interest, and they present them this big fucking book full of things that happened to them or things they did. Right? I read an article about a Japanese <coughs> lady who survived the bombing of Hiroshima. Now, would you like to guess what happened to her on This Is Your Life? <laughs> They brought on one of the fucking pilots who dropped oh, the bomb. Oh, oh, now that is just fucking mental, isn't it? That's like finding somebody who survived 9-11 and going, Here's Osama Bin Laden! <laughs> like, why would you ever want to meet that fucking person? That is just insanity. It is bonkers. The, um, it, it, it's just, and it, it was American, of course, it was fucking American. Yeah. <laughs> now, according to, oh, what did you fucking say now? That's not what I was going to say. Can sorry. Uh, what? I'm oh, sorry. Do you want me to deep throw it? <laughs> <laughs> I said that to my mother, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> In case anybody was wondering how many fucks I had. I'd hate to Why see was... that so. Yeah, I know you fucking know. <laughs> so, anyway, back to the stupid questions we all get asked. I used to work as a painter and decorator. Oh. Yeah, oh. oh. <laughs> it's a fucking if shit you job, isn't it? What? If you can piss, you can paint. Yeah, you can paint. not difficult. Put paint on wall. If you can't do that, if you fucking can't put the paint on the wall, you should be just yeeted into the fucking sea. Like, there's no hope for you. There's literally no hope. It's like, like, can you put your shoes on? Like, that's that kind of thing. But anyway, I used to do this job. We were painting this house one day, and then the neighbours came out and they were like, we've got a bit of a fucking rust spot on the wall there. Can you do that for us? And I was like, yeah, sound. Easy enough. Get up the ladder. Not magic, by the way, just to reiterate that point. Not magic. <laughs> I'm painting away, and then I hear this, excuse me. Not, not a sentence you hear very often at the top of a ladder. Excuse me! And it was a forceful excuse me as well. It wasn't like a, excuse me, are you okay up there? Do you want some help? It was, oi, dickhead! <laughs> and I look around, and it's one of the neighbours, and he looks up at me and asks me a very honest question. Do they know you're doing that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. Why the fuck wouldn't they know I'm doing that? Do you think I walk around dressed like this with a fucking ladder and a tub of matching paint hoping to God I can paint a fucking wall that needs doing? Like... What kind of fucking psychopath do you think I am? <laughs> Apparently one that looks like Z a budget Zach Galifianakis in fucking paint spattered clothes. <laughs> Another thing about being Manx is the question of how Manx you are. That comes up a lot, doesn't it? How Manx are you? Well, I was born here, so fairly Manx, right? It's gotta be fairly Manx. Like, no, no, no. How Manx are you? Like, was your mum born here? Yeah, she was actually. Yeah, sure. Wait, Dad, no East Coast? Well, you're not that Manx then, are you? <laughs> right, how Manx do I fucking have to be to qualify to be Manx? I was born here, listen to me, for fuck's sake. They're like, no, you can't be true Manx. You can't be true Manx. You can't be allowed to live here. Unless. 20 generations of your family have only ever had sex with people who were in line of sight of them. <laughs> and then in the next breath, these people will say, God, oh, can't trust people for Foxdale, they're in bed then. 
definition should be manx as fuck. Like, you should be carrying them up to the top of Stayfell on a fucking birch branch fucking chair and worshipping them to the end of fucking time. Shouldn't you? You really should, shouldn't you? Don't give me this fucking, you're not that manx. Good. I don't want to be king of the inbreds. I'm fine. Like, this is fine. I know, I know it looked like what would have happened if you ordered Zap Galifianakis' wish, but honestly, I, I don't want 18 toes and all of them to be webbed. It's fine. <laughs> and I, I am a shit man's person, apart from having an English dad, which is the near fucking heresy for a lot of people. Um, I've married a South African. Controversial, I know. <laughs> Marrying out of the family. It's a nice friend, it? <laughs> the way it happened is um, oh. quite a saga. <laughs> quite a saga. And it also shows how just fucking oblivious, not just me, but a lot of men are, really. We're very laser focused on things, and most of those things are just whatever falls within our field of vision, really, isn't it? You know, like, oh, dog, that's cool, isn't it? <laughs> and then you realise your wife was trying to fucking talk to you, or break up with you, or discuss dinner. I don't know, there was a dog. Nice dog, though. It was a fucking nice dog. It really was. It really was the best coat I've ever seen. Um, but anyway. It wasn't, it wasn't a huge amount of time after I met my wife that she decided, not me, oh. that we were going to get married. <coughs> it was 2012, it was a leap year, I'm a forward-thinking person, who gives a fuck? So, it's Father's Day, we're out in the pub, she decides she's going to pop the question to my parents. She's going to ask them for my hand in marriage. I love this, by the way, because it took all the pressure off me, and I love not having to do anything. I fucking thrive on that shit. <laughs> so, we're out, the, we're out on the pub, we're all having a good night. I go out for a fag at the time, and then she asks my mum, I need to ask you this serious question here. Can I take your son's hand in marriage? And my mum just... <laughs> just, there's no other way to describe it. Physically, mentally, emotionally, folds in on herself. <laughs> and my sister hears this, it's like, Mum, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? And then she can't speak. So my wife has to repeat again, look, I've just asked for your brother's hand in marriage, and she does exactly the fucking same thing. Like, <laughs> and they're both crying the fucking eyes out in the pub. I'm out having a cigarette. I don't know where my fucking dad is, because. My dad's just fucking doing man things somewhere, like staring at a dog and going. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come out, I come back in for this from the cigarette, right? My mum and my sister are ugly crying in the pub <laughs> on Father's Day, and my dad is sat there going. <laughs> I didn't do this. <laughs> what, what? So I come in and I'm like, what the fuck has happened? Like, within five minutes, everyone's gone from happy, smiley, let's have a laugh in the pub to everybody we know has just died. And I asked my wife, like, what the fuck has just happened? And then she's like, oh, oh I don't know. They're, they're, they're sad, your dad's, they're, you know, your mum's sad, that dad's not here, you know, he's, he's dead, he's gone, you know, he's not here for Father's Day, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And then looking back at it now, I was like, no, it doesn't make sense, he was dead ten fucking years. <laughs> Why the fuck would that have hit so late, you dickhead? <laughs> that was the first, first sign I missed. So, months later, I get invited to South Africa for a month. For a holiday. Second sign I missed. Who the fuck gets invited to South Africa for a month for a holiday? 
Nobody does. It's not a thing that happens to normal people. But I'm just like, cool. Sound. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fucking go. So, we get to South Africa after the fucking awful flight. And I've got this itinerary handed to me, basically, of we're going to meet my mum, we're going to meet my dad, we're going to meet my auntie here, we're going to meet my auntie there, we're going to go to the fucking Pretoria, the other side of the country, we're going to meet my family there, we're going to meet this family, we're going to meet that family. I'm meeting everybody she's fucking related to in this country. <laughs> Still, nothing happening up here. No warning signs, nothing. You would think by now that somebody with an ounce of fucking sense would have gone, hang on. There's something not quite right about this holiday. This seems to be awfully planned out. There seems to be a lot of family members involved here. Normally you stay for two weeks, you see a Ferris wheel or fucking whatever you do on the holidays, and then you go home. But I'm here for a month, I'm meeting everybody she's ever met. In order of how she met them. Still, no, fine, cool. Brit on holiday, yay, let's get pissed, fucking hot weather, sad. <laughs> Who's, who's fucking starting a barbecue here? Let's go. Right. <coughs> bry. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bry. Yeah. I'd rather have a boss. That was the last one I wanted to use. So anyway. I got it. <laughs> it gets to the last day of this whole prearranged thing. Yeah. And her grandmother turns up to the house dressed in every single bit of fine clothing, fine jewellery, and fine fucking anything she can find. <laughs> she looks like she is going to play fucking craps in Las Vegas. <laughs> she is fucking on it. And I am like, cool. We're going to an all-you-can-eat pizza place. This lady takes pizza fucking seriously. I get down with that. I fucking get down with that. That is awesome. We get back to the house. Again, I am missing every fucking sign thrown up at me here that something's wrong. We Skype my family. My dad is on the screen. He has a pan on his head. I don't know why. He's drank a lot. He's wearing a pan. There's every close friend my mother has sitting on screen. Again, still no warning signs. I'm just like... Fuck, everyone's really happy I've gone to San Francisco. <laughs> You're not coming home. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I've never been this, like, blessed with a holiday before. I must, I, I must be a prince. Are they going to tell me I'm inheriting a million pounds here? You did. And then I turn around and my wife's on one knee, and I'm like, oh, it's been a long day, you saw. <laughs> is it, has it been that? Bad of a day. And then she's like shaking like a shitting dog. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> and she's just like, I've got a question to ask you. And I'm like, yeah, I love another drink. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, will you marry me? And do you know what the first word out of my mouth was? No. It wasn't that. It was worse. It was much worse than that. It was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Like, the worst thing you can say to somebody who's trying to propose to you is, are you fucking serious? And I think part of me was like, there's no fucking way anyone's done this for me. Like, look at me. I'm sorry, but look at me. No, don't fucking R me! Why have you fucking sympathy? I'm being honest here. This is what comedy's about. I know I look like a budget block of ham that's been through a hoover. It's fine, I've accepted that now. But it still makes me think that nobody can do anything nice for me. And then when it finally clicked, and I was like, fuck, this is happening. This is happening. I went, to take a breath to say yes, and Skype dropped. Yeah. Everybody on the Isle of Man side was like, they heard, gone. I've never heard so many phones ring at one time in my life. Everybody fucking, Did like, everybody's fucking phone. say yes? But the worst thing about that trip was I nearly didn't make it back. So, in the midst of meeting all the family, we were staying in Pretoria, the hot part. 
I'm South African, like that makes a difference. It's all fucking hot, it's just really fucking hot there. And her auntie says, do you want to go and meet some of the wildlife? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, of course I do, I'm here in fucking Africa. Like, wildlife's why I'm here. And then she shows me these pictures of her grandson wearing, uh, wait, fucking hell, is that too much to drink? Fucking hell. <laughs> Meeting these little fucking tiger cubs, and they're like the size of kittens. These tiny little furry baby tigers. And I was like, yeah, I want to fucking meet a little tiger cub. Who doesn't want to meet a little fucking tiger cub? Little cuddly, stripy bastards. So we go out, two hour drive to this fucking park where these tiger cubs are. We pay the entrance fee. We tell them what we want to do. We want to go meet the fucking tiger cubs. And then the lady's like, cool, we're going to meet the tiger cubs. And I walk in this cage. And then, um, like, why are they in a cage? Tiger cubs, little little kittens don't need to be in a cage the size of this room, do they? Surely they don't need that much space. And they shut the door behind us. And then her auntie dropped the clanger on me. Oh, by the way, those photos were taken six months ago. It's like, sorry, fucking what? Six months ago? They open the other side, and these two Labrador-sized fucking tigers walk in with me. And I fucking shit myself. Fight or flight kicks in at this point. And I soon discover there's a third option, and it's freeze and shit your pants. <laughs> they always talk about fight or flight, but they never prepare you for... <coughs> <laughs> Which is basically what I look like when these fucking things walk in. My wife's a fucking crazy cat lady, so she's just overridden this immediately by going, Oh, kitties, but big kitties, running after them, chasing two fucking apex predators round a cage while I'm still going, I'm gonna die, 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 I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And I also didn't realise that they can fucking really sense fear from you, like, 110%. Anybody that says an animal can't sense fear from you has never been in a cage with two tigers. So, I'm stood here while she's chasing two fucking predators round, going, what the fuck am I going to do here? I'm trapped. And then I just, I, I just kept... Freezing. I was like, I've got to do something. It ran past me, I touched it, and I was like, oh, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then one of them decided to lock eyes with me, and it's the worst thing in the world when something like that locks eyes with you because it's just fucking horrifying. And it was looking at me like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have some of this. <laughs> Definitely gonna have me some of this. She's diverted one of them just doing laps. But now unlocked eyes with this fucking thing designed to kill. And I'm just like, fuck, 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 right? Maybe if I just act calm, act nice, act natural, like hee 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 whatever I'm gonna do here, it's not gonna do anything to me. This cat had other ideas. It was like, nah, big fat sausage boy here is getting it. It's getting it big time. And it took a nice saunter around the cage, just locking eyes with me like, bitch, I'm gonna make you mine. <laughs> the whole way around. And then it ran. Straight at me. And when people say, life flashes before your eyes, it makes you realize, you had no life. <laughs> that shit happened real fast. It happened real fast. I have, like, snapshots of what happened. It was there. Then it was there. Then it was fucking there. The last memory I have of it is claws, mouth, like that. And I was like, I'm a goner. I'm fucking dead. It got hold of shorts and fuck all else. And I have never felt relief like that in my fucking life. What followed was sheer, unadulterated embarrassment when I turned around to find an entire fucking tour group had been watching this entire scenario play out. I had about 15 fucking tourists creased, dying laughing at me, 
just pointing her and they're fucking white boys caged with tigers. What the fuck is he doing? Do you not know what they are? Like, what the fuck was he thinking? And to rub salt in the wound after we got out of this fucking cage, my wife's auntie who drove us there went, come and look at this. And she just fucking strutted into a cage with a full on fucking tiger. Like, full grown thing, reared up on her shoulders, put its paws on her shoulders, and she just stood there and looked at me and was like, bitch. <laughs> and that was when I knew I was accepted into the family. <laughs> that was the exact moment. Thank you very much, guys. You've been a, you've been a blast. Thank you.